The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 17th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. If you've got a question, though, you can't call in. You can send me an email. Now, send that off early. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, a bit of a mixed bag. The mix is coming from the Dow Transports down about six tenths of a percent or 97 points. The other U.S. indices traded the upside. The Dow up about one tenth, a little over that, 49 points. Same for the S&P, eight points, four tenths for the NASDAQ, 164, eight tenths for the Russell, 16 points, one percent for the semis. That's a 35 point move there. Gold is off about nine bucks. Silver down 18 cents. Lights recruit off 50 pennies. Natural gas is flat. And the 30 year Treasury printing down at 126.03. That is off 11 ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got Argenics up 115 bucks or 30%. Mercado Libre, 17 bucks, nearly 2%. El Nylum Pharmaceuticals, 8%, 15 bucks. Service Now, 13 bucks. Netflix up 12, about a 2 and 7 tenths percent move. To the downside, the shakers out there, Apellus Pharmaceuticals, 19% move, $16. Restoration Hardware off 11 bucks. That's 3%. Asmill Holdings, $10 to the downside, a little over 1%. Thermo Fisher Scientific, 1 to 4 tenths percent or 7 bucks. And Pool Corporation down 750. That's a 2% move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin where we begin. Begin where we begin. You got to love that. Let's start with our market breadth out here. Let's look at that 30 minute market breadth for the SP and the NASDAQ 100. It's the SP up on our, our charts right now, 157, 162 above. 152 below. So just turn slightly bullish out there. Let's look at the NASDAQ 100 NDX. Let's see if this is bullish or bearish with regard to its 30 minute time frame. And we've got 48 above, 16 below. So for the 30 minute time frame for the SP and the NQ, we go take a look at those intraday charts. We know that that has bullish market breadth. Let's look at the other four times 60, 240, daily and weekly. We take a look at the SP 500 on a 60 minute time frame, slightly bearish, 153 above. 195 below. That's the only time frame. If we take a look at the NDX 100, what we have out here is bullish for all four time frames. So to repeat or to summarize, the NASDAQ 100 bullish market breadth for 30, 60, 240 daily and weekly. And the S&P 500 is the four hour time, that's the 60 minute time frame that is just slightly bearish out there. Otherwise, its other time frames are bullish. So now let's go take a look at what we take a look at here. Let's stay on this uh, chart. Where are we at here? What do we have? Okay, so here what we can see, this is the daily time frame set of charts out here. We can see last week how the tops inside of both the ES, the NQ, and the Russell 2000 each failed. So those tops are no longer in place out there. We don't have any new profiles to uh, speak of. And it uh, looks like the uh, Dow wants to go target the top of its weekly profile, 34,888. And the uh, uh, IWM, the Russell 2000, does have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside with a price target of 20. 
30 out there. Let's go out to California and speak with Garo. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good. How about you, sir? Excellent. Thanks much for asking. Had a very nice weekend. Saw some pretty nice golf out there. Looking forward to the uh, to the uh, Open Championship. Are, are you? I don't think you're a golfer, but uh, am I wrong about that? No, I'm not. I'm. Not. I only like uh, football. That soccer, football. Yes, I love yeah. that. That's the only thing that I watch. The rest. The rest to me is just doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. And what do you think? What do you think? Have any opinion on Messi coming down here to Miami? Coming to, um, I wish you would come here to California, and I would be a host, <laughs> and I would take care of you. Uh, I'm sure. Well, I think he's going to make something like about sixty or eighty million dollars a year down here in Miami. So tickets, the tickets for the first game. Uh, I think it might be tomorrow or something, but the smallest price is 200 bucks. Kind of interesting for uh, <laughs> soccer down here. But I know you called to talk about yeah. Restoration Hardware. RH is the ticker symbol out there. Uh, Garo, tell me what you're doing and how I can best help you. Uh, RH, uh, I've been uh, with it for long, the same way that I was with MDB. Yes. Uh, uh, the, this one has been gone uh, up like a ladder. It's very extended. Yes, And then when I look at the weekly chart, uh, I see that since last uh, June, uh, of June of last year, uh, it, it's been hitting on that 200 simple moving average several times, one, two, yes. three, four, five times, and been rolling down after that. Now, again, it's been hitting, uh, the, 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 the last uh, 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 formation that I see has been hit the 200 day, and there is a red uh, candle next to that 200 day. And uh, the um, uh, stochastic is been rolling down. Uh, 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 what do you think that this is this is the end of it? Is gonna be a short from here, or you don't see no sign of short? Hmm. It's a great question. So first, when I take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, um, one of the patterns that I would be looking for is to try to come up with an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And I really don't see one. As you said, this has just been a vertical move to the upside. Um, and uh, now I still show this on the daily time frame. I just want to see if, I, if this matches what you have, Garo. I still show yes, the please. parabolic SAR dot below price do you for the daily time frame right now i showed it about 360 52 i have not heard back from the folks at east signal so I was just curious do you have that same setup or is this another yes, yes. chart you yes. do okay i, I have that sir so the, the value of my sorry is 350 352 from that point this is going to go south but it, it has long ways to go there. At least we have something around ten dollars until to get to that point. But sure. uh, the, but uh, the end of the candle on the daily chart is below its five-day moving average. I see that. When the, yes. uh, the, the tail of the candle is red and goes below than the value of that five-day, that it's a it's a, it's not a good sign. So, okay. uh, but, but I'm, I'm not going to short it until that candle hits the, the lower dot and the dot moves up. From there Got on, it. yes, I have that confidence. Still, it's not 100%, but I have that confidence that the trend is changing and now it's, it's a downward. Excellent, but excellent. Besides those dots, do you see anything else? Yes, so we'll, we'll discuss that as soon as we get back from this uh, commercial. So, Garo, if you'd be kind yes, enough to hold sir. on through the break, we'll yes. come back. We'll take a look at ticker symbol RH, which I show support at about 358.80. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with Garo in Newport Beach, California. We're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol RH, Restoration Hardware. Uh, what the, uh, the chart that I have on my screen here first, Garo, is the chart that shows us consecutive days to the upside, consecutive days to the downside. Higher closes or higher, higher closes either to the upside or higher closes to the downside. In this case here, we see that today is likely to become bar number one to the downside. If we take a look at the rally coming off of the lows back here in May, what we see here is the retracements have lasted just for two days. That's a typical reaction, especially in a bull market. So the level of support, and I mentioned this before we went to break, it's in the 358 area. 358 area happens to be the oscillator and change line. Currently printed on my screen at 358.94. That is a likely price target for a pullback. That's the first level of support that I would be looking for. So if we do get a two-day pullback and price pulls back to that level, um, would it be a short? Well, for me, it would not be a short. For you, it could be, depending on where your dot is. My dot's at 360.52. Yours is around 353, I believe. Um, so, But for me, if it holds that green oscillator and change line, that still is bullish. And it's especially bullish because what I don't have is a daily topping pattern, at least the type that, that I use out here. So it's only, I don't see a daily topping pattern. I do see where this thing has had, you know, just had a nice... Uh, a uh, four-day run-up and then a one-day pullback and a one-day move higher. So I think the first thing I'd be looking for is, does this extend beyond a two-day pullback? If not, then this is still bullish out there. So any questions about this chart before I move on to anything else? No, that's fine. So far, it's very good. Okay. But so now, uh, let me tell you, uh, the, Steve, 353 and change is today's price. Tomorrow, yes. that's going to be a different number. Right, See? right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Please. Yeah. yeah, so I just wanted to, the difference between my number and your number are going to be about the same area. And so what I just wanted to say is for me to get uh, bearish or to, to confirm that it's lost that momentum would need to be a close below that oscillator and change that. Now, if it does close below that, Garo, again, right now it's at 358.92, the price target would then become the top of its daily profile. Unless a new profile were to form, you or I, we don't know that. Right now there is none. And so then 
next downside target for me would be 341.65. Now that profile form below price. That's a bullish message for the stock itself, as long as price can remain above that 341.65 area. That's what I see when I look at the daily chart. The weekly chart, the one thing that I notice here, Garo, is that the first time up to the highs, that 200-day uh, moving average, like we took a look at on the uh, black background charts, was back here for the week of, what, August 19th. And the volume there was 3 million shares. The next time that we we're up at that 200, which I don't show on my screen here, was on the black background screen, was 4.1 million shares, and that was February 3rd. Last week, you were up with 6.4 million shares. So we have accelerating volume as price moves higher. To me, that's a bullish sign. And then when I take a look at the weekly chart, I've kind of drawn in here your basic consolidation type pattern that I see out here. So the weekly chart is suggesting to me that price wants to make a move eventually up into the 440-ish type range out there. And the monthly chart is confirming that. And it's confirming that because we have a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom completed in July of 2022. And last month, price closed above the top of its monthly profile, something we haven't seen for quite some time. And the top of that profile was 302.52 or 365 right now. So the monthly chart says bullish. The weekly chart says bullish. But it's testing that 200-day moving average. Um, but we got to wait to see what it looks like on Friday. And the daily chart says, okay, I'm just ready for a normal two-day pullback. That's what I see at this moment in time. What questions do you have about these additional charts here that I've shared with you? No, it's fine. Everything is fine because I don't, I don't believe in volume at all. Yes. A, a, a stock can go up with a very low volume. It can go down with a very low volume. So Absolutely. To volume is a, is a nonsense. You see, yeah. um, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't say that you're wrong, Steve. You're wrong, no, no. too. But I don't believe in volume at all. So that's yes. why uh, when you say it's go it's, to this time it's going up with six million. So. Uh, the, that 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 doesn't that doesn't mean nothing to me. But anyways, the the, the way you explained to me, I uh, that, that's how much I grasp for by looking at these two charts. But we have to again, we have to wait and see that how it's going to act on the daily uh, daily Absolutely. chart. To me, is very very important because uh, tomorrow is going to be a different number than three fifty three fifty two. And if the candle goes down and hits that dot and dot flips up. And then, uh, then I don't know, for some reason, I believe more in SAR dots than volume. No, I understand. Uh, and then from on, uh, we see what will happen. And probably I will call you sometimes next week and we go over it. But Which would I be do appreciate that very, very much for your time and you listening bet. to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You bet. Garo, always good to speak to you. That was Garo in California. 877-927-6648 if you'd like to call as well, folks. We would love to hear from you. Uh, let's go and take a look. We do have a couple of requests that have come in, so let's get to those. I want to make sure. One came in from Friday. Uh, didn't get it till after we were off the show. And This was for David in Panama City, and the ticker symbol that Dave wants to take a look at is TEAM. So we've got that up on my screen here. I just wanted to get to my other charts. If you just give me a moment, please. And uh, so when we take a look at team, uh, you've got the 180 calls that expire in July of uh, July, July 28th. So what we have out here is Friday was a really two candle formations out there, two candle topping formation, I should say, a TD nine count top and a rose momentum indicator. Now, whenever you get a topping pattern, all that it really entitles sellers to do is try to push price back to support can it bust through support in essence that was really the conversation that i was having with gar was trying to understand where are some support levels and we took a look at that oscillator and change line as being the first one well turns out that this morning what team did was it pulled back tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line so even though we have two topping patterns here not that two make it any stronger than one what we also have is a successful test of support and you now have price trading above the top of its daily profile. Of course, it was on Friday as well. And it's green oscillator and change line. Conditions here, David, are neutral to bullish. We got bearish top, more neutral than anything else. But because of today's test, I'm going to go neutral to bullish. Does it get to the 187? Well, or the 180? Well, you, uh, you know, you, you, you're, you're in the money here, so or you should be in the money here. Um, on a weekly basis, if we take a look at last week's move higher, 
when it generated that uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top, when it generated that TD9 count top, that's when price was testing another level of resistance, David, and that was the weekly top of its profile, 188.57. And what it was also doing last week, it was testing the uh, resistance of the of its uh, monthly oscillator and change line, which is red, at 192.14. Now, last time price was up here, was on the trading day of June 6th. That had volume there of 2.1 million shares. And on Friday, it was pushing with 3 million shares. Now, it did close below that swing point, but what it was signaling to us is that price should at least test that swing again. Now, it could just be the bottom of the swing point. The bottom of the swing point, or the low, I should say, of June 6th is 182.61. We've already tested that today. The volume on that candle, I think I mentioned that before, was 2.1 million shares. So far today, you're up with uh, 300,000 shares. So we've got much lighter volume than we did on Friday. A test of rejection, would say we probably just consolidated between there and 172.45. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. A gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go take a look at uh, ticker symbol CVM, Amazon Mary. That's Sell Side Corp out here, trading out right now at uh, two dollars and uh, ninety cents. It's taking on TD nine count breakdown resistance, Dan, at two eighty nine. Two eighty nine is your number that you'd love to see cleared. Last time price was up here was back on uh, looks like April nineteenth. Volume there was about uh, four hundred ninety seven thousand shares. So far today, you've done four hundred nineteen thousand. So it is pushing up against that uh, little swing point. It's doing it with volume. It's already tested that. Even if it rejects that swing point, which would mean to close below 294, it should retest it again. But Dan, on a daily basis, what you'd like to see here is a close above 289. If you get that, that suggests that you get back to its recent highs. Those are the ones from March of 2023, and that's up at the 333 level. On a monthly time frame, CVM has a confirmed TD9 count bottom was bar number eight out there. Price consolidating with inside its uh, monthly profile. That's a new profile that formed last month, Dan. The resistance level there is 332. So the call we make here is if we get a daily close above 289, odds favor it makes a move up to 332. If it can close above 332, it'll signal a, a, a longer term change in trend and then suggest a move up to 448. 448 would be the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to what CVM is uh, doing out there. You had a second request. That was to take a look at IBRX. As we pull this chart up here, IBRX printing out right now at about 307, and it is uh, trading above the top of its uh, daily profile. So, Dan, you'd love to see two consecutive closes above 291. 291 is the top of that daily profile. If you get that, what is likely to then occur is a move up to 365. I say likely to occur because the monthly chart says we're sitting at resistance. There's really two levels of resistance that it's taking on on a monthly basis, Dan. The first is the top of the profile. Granted, we're slightly above it. 298 is the top of the profile. We're trading right now at 307, just, yeah, 307, 311, 307 area out there. So on a monthly basis, if you could get a close above that oscillator and change line, that is currently printing at... 311. So you got 311, which is basically where we're at right now. If you can get a close above that on a monthly basis, I realize it's still early there, that would then signal to you and I that move to 365. So just trading above it will be helping us to get or helping this instrument to get to that outcome. But on a daily basis right now, you're trading above resistance. The second close above that suggests that move to the 365 area. You just simply have that battle on that monthly time frame chart. So, Dano, I hope that helps you out with regard to IBRX, and thanks so much for the requests that you have provided. Nancy is asking the question, which I do not know the answer to, and it, Nancy's going to say, excellent question. The question is, is there any way to gauge what the impact on Apple is going to be um, inside of the, uh, uh, on the rebalancing that's taking place, I believe it's next Monday. So I think today, either they have, perhaps they've, re, re, they've released what percentages they're going to drop things back to. Nancy, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to your question, but I, I would imagine over the next uh, couple of days, we should maybe be able to get a gauge on that. But what we can do, at least we can go take a look at the Apple chart. So why don't we at least do that? Well, Apple, there's five instruments, right? I believe there's five instruments that are going to be um, recalibrated out there. So you've got Apple. I think it got Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, and Meta. I mean, those are the top five. I assume those are the five, but but it, 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 don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. If we take a look at Apple, Apple today running into the top of its daily profile. It's just consolidating with inside its daily profile, finding resistance at its oscillator and change line. I do not see a top here, although I probably could make a sell to D point. Let me see here. Yeah, there's, there's certainly there's a sell the D point pattern with this gap to the downside, but then that gap got taken out with the gap to the upside this morning. So no, I don't see a topping pattern in Apple. I see a consolidation with inside its profile. What I can say, Nancy, is that if Apple uh, it pulls back uh, because of the rebalancing here, it should find support at 185.01, between 185.01 and 185.96. If price were to close below 185.01, 18065 would become the next target and if price closes below that then there's some other problems out there so that's what i'd be looking at with regard to apple is there a way for me to gauge what is what is going to happen to price as the rebalancing takes place i imagine the rebalancing is done on friday of this week are they really saying that it's monday the 24th 
Mm, interesting. In any event out there, I hope that helps you out. Um, I tell you what we can do, maybe it kind of helps out a little bit, is go into the question that came in from Inno Visual inside the Tiger's Den. And Inno's question was about, he said, last week I made the statement that the, uh, well, it wasn't that chart that I wanted. I made the statement, well, I have to go back and actually, what did he say? Give me a second here. Got to find it. I didn't write it down. I thought I did, but I did not. It was, um, okay, so Stevie's having trouble. Here we go. Steve, you had a potential sell on the weekly NQ last week. What would need to happen to confirm that? Not much supporting it right now, uh, but markets change. Yes, they do. So we've got the charts for the NQ. So that was the question. First of all, the question was, what would need to happen to confirm that? The only thing that needs to happen to confirm the sell signal is the end of the week. So a TD9 count pattern is what we were looking at. So you're looking at the center screen out here. I'll just simply expand it out. Um, I, I don't have the continuous contract up here. I've just got the uh, current September. I don't have a ton of data, but I do have enough data to let us know that we got to a TD9 count top out there. I also see this road momentum indicator signal that has been triggered. Now, on a weekly basis, on a TD9 count top, it's either bar 8, 9, in this case here we know it is at least bar 9, or the bar following bar number 9, you know, that would identify the top. So the only thing that we need is really just for the week to complete. And then we will officially have a TD9 count top. Now, whatever the high is, whatever the high is, presently, the high of the pattern, I don't know that this is going to stick or not, but presently the high of the pattern is 15.857.25. Whatever that high is come the end of the week, if price closes above that the following week, then this pattern will have failed, tells about a strong upward momentum move, and that we should be looking for much higher price inside the NQ. But your other question with regard to what needs to happen out there, when we get a topping pattern on a larger time frame, we should then begin to see topping patterns confirm on smaller time frames. It doesn't have to be each smaller time frame, but we should start seeing tops occur on smaller time frames. Well, it's logical to go from a weekly chart to a daily chart. And we do that, we take a look at the NQ. What we see here are triggered road momentum indicator signals out here. Now, if we don't take out uh, tomorrow's, uh, yesterday's high, or Friday's high out there, and then we do spike above that in the next couple of days, that being 15.857.25, we would at least trigger another seventh wave move signal. That would be letter G. You would need a a, a, a lower high to confirm that pattern. In essence, the, you know, visual, what I'm really trying to say to you not very well, but I'm still trying, is that if we get a confirmed top on the daily time frame, that adds to the signal that we have on the weekly. So what do we really need to see on a weekly basis to confirm its top? We need to see a daily top to tell us that that weekly TD9 count pattern is likely to take hold. Hope that answers your question. Thanks so much for the request. Of course, folks, I would love to hear from you as well. I'll check the emails, but uh, don't believe we have, oh, we've got one request here. That was maybe from Rick Vic, but that might be just talking about Messi, for all I know. But give us a call or send me an email, steve at tfn.com, or a ping inside the Tiger's Den. Hope you're right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still that mixed bag out there coming from the Dow Transports off 87 points. Dow Dow's now up 80, about two tenths, three tenths for the S&P 14, six tenths for the Nasdaq 196 points, one percent for the Russell. That's an 18 point move to the upside. We're taking a look at ticker symbol here, SEDG, and SEG. This is uh, from David H. I believe that's in Tomball, Texas. Let me see here. David uh, writes in. He says, "Hey, Steve, can you give me your perspective?" Oh, Panama City. I apologize. Uh, perspective on the uh, seller's edge i have the 280 calls expiring on july 28th so that sedg is the seller's edge that's it okay so sedg sed here's what i can share with you with regard to sedg it is trying to take out a b point of an a to b equal cd to the upside on a daily basis that b point was from the trading day of July 3rd. Now, this is the problem. July 3rd, we know, is holiday trading, 892,000 shares. Today, you're at 382. 382, 400,000 shares says we do about 1.2 million shares. So, uh, technically speaking, it looks like you're going to get a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside today. Now, again, they got that volume issue between the holiday and today, but uh, the A to B equals CD would give you a price projection of 295. That would be the one to one. You can see at 297.82, you have a TD9 count breakdown resistance level out there. So very likely what we have is SEDG, Solar Edge Technologies, is getting ready to confirm an A to B equals CDT upside. In order to do that, it needs to close a day above 277.73. That is the B point. On a weekly basis, we can see that price is right now trading above its oscillator and change line. It is a slightly bullish structured profile. On Friday last week, price closed above the center of that bullish structured profile. What typically unfolds there, David, is that signals its intent to move to the top of the profile. And that's at 305.69. So continued closes above the weekly oscillator and change line at 278 and change out there is going to add to the idea of a move to 305. So we've got 295.43. 
297.82 and 305.69 as the likely price targets. And lastly, on a monthly basis, that likely price target would be up at 313.56. That's where it would experience some resistance. So it looks to me like SEDG, as long as it closes today above 277.73, I would say tomorrow as well. We like to have those two bar confirmations out there. What that would be suggesting to you and I, David, is that price wants to make that run towards those levels, the 295 ish area out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Solar Edge. Um, I will say, though, let's look at this. Today is also going to become bar number seven of its move higher, consecutive sessions out here. I see one other instance where we had a seven consecutive move higher. That was back on January 17, 2023. That led to your typical two bar pullback out there. So what I would also then say is you should experience a two day pullback and it likely begins today. Do I have any kind of a signal for that? I do not. I'd be watching a short term time frame chart such as a 30 minute chart. Here, for example, is the 30 minute time frame chart shows us roads, but indicator signals have been triggered, but nothing has been confirmed in order to be confirmed you need a bearish reversal candle out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at that solar edge technologies out there. David, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. And yes, uh, Vic did write in. He said, Messi is to soccer players what Stevie Ray Vaughan, and he knows that he and both of us love Stevie Ray Vaughan, is to ax players. Uh, he's the Michael Jordan of uh, football. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, I saw Messi play during the uh, championships, most recent uh, championships, and uh, and especially as a penalty kicking, uh, it really extraordinary control that he has over his body, what's going on in front of him, the ball. And it is fun to uh, watch. I will definitely go down and catch a game. I don't want to have to pay 200 bucks for a, a soccer ticket, though. So uh, but but I definitely will get down there. All right. Uh, John C. inside the Tigers. I wanted to take a look at NVIDIA out there. And I think it might have just been, can we take a look at NVIDIA? So we've got NVIDIA up on our screen out here. This thing is strong like bull. Last week negated a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top formed on June 23rd. And that lasted basically for, didn't really last because the pattern completed the week before last. And then got immediately negated last week. This says a strong momentum move is still underway for NVIDIA to the upside. On a monthly time frame, on a monthly time frame, we are in bar number seven of its move. It has a B point that had volume of 1 billion, 1 billion, 81 million shares, and it was passed with 1.1 billion. So there's a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. John, see what we're going to do here is we're going to switch uh, panels, charts. We're going to go to the black background charts where I can draw in those A to B equals CD. For all I know, I might have them in there anyways. But let's pull up the NVIDIA charts and see what we have going on on that monthly confirmed A to B equals CD to upside. Oh, we do. And so what we can also see out here is that the one-to-one -one price target. Let me get rid of – well, the one-to-one -one price target. I won't get rid of it. The one-to-one -one price target gets us up to 423.49. And we're well above that right now. So the next price target becomes it's really the next price target is the range between 493.76 and 509.26. 493.76 is the expansion of the swing points from the high from November 1st, 2021, 346.47 down to the low that took place in October of 2022. And that's at 177. I'm sorry. That's at 134.97. And if we. Oh, it can't be. That's at 108, 108.13, 346.47 to 108.13. So all I've done is I've taken those two data points and I've calculated 1.272 and the 1.618 uh, expansion of that. The 1.272 is the one that gets us to 509.20, uh, I'm sorry, to 493.76. 509.26 of the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD to the upside. Strong looking move out here. We take a look at the weekly time, uh, the monthly time frame chart. On a weekly basis out here, shoot, you're past the 1 to 3.618 A to B equals CD. So I don't have anything. When we negated a TD9 count top, I think the monthly really kicks in. And on a daily basis, um, if we did get a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rosemontum indicator top. Price remains above profile. Price remains above its green oscillator and change line. Uh, John C., I don't know any other way to uh, look at this. If that's uh, yeah, you, you asked about that. I don't see any other way to look at this uh, and come with, with a different conclusion than NVIDIA 
is running the world out here. It is strong like bull, and that ain't no bull. All right, so let's see if we've got any other questions that have come in. Nothing by email. Let me just make sure. Nothing by email. A quick peek of the den, and I don't see anything out there. So now what do we do, folks? I'm just curious. NVIDIA. Uh, where are we at on its seasonal cycle basis? Let's go take a look at NVIDIA, see if we can figure that out. So here in the S&P 500, this happens to be our 95-year um, cycle that says we should expect a top right around now. But NVDA, let's go see if we can find out what its seasonal pattern is, because it surely is strong. Well, its seasonal pattern, interestingly enough, over the course of the last 24 years, says we should be in a descending cycle. That doesn't bottom out until we get to August 10th. We're clearly not in that. This is ignoring its seasonal cycle out there. So no reason for Stevie to put that on your screen for any longer than that. We get back for this breakout here. I don't think we have any other requests. And if that's the case, we'll just take a look at the intraday charts for the uh, NASDAQ and the ES Mini. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, one of our generals wants to take a look at the LABU. That's the uh, 3X, uh, I believe, for the biotech and the S&P 500. I don't recall what the 1X is. I know IBB is for the uh, NASDAQ, but I don't recall what it is for the S&P. Have a little bit of a brain fart. But what we do have coming out, what we do have right now, LABU is generating a, a confirmed data B equals CD to the ups, XBI. Thanks, Dan. Uh, it's taking out its, uh, we'll confirm that by looking at XBI. It's taking out its swing point from back on July 13th, did volume of 25 million shares. You're already at 22 million shares so far. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside pattern out here. That ought to take us to about, let me give you the approximation on this, in the LABU, the one-to-one -one is at about the 680-ish type area. 754 could also be a uh, price target. That's a CD9 count breakdown level. The uh, weekly chart looks bullish to me. The monthly chart looks somewhat bullish. Let's take a quick peek here at XBI, make sure that it's confirming the same thing. Oh, it's not. You didn't see that chart? Son of a gun, Stevie. Thanks, Bill. Sorry about that. Let's just change the windows here. So we're going to look at XBI anyway. So if XBI confirms what we just took a look at. So XBI has got a swing point out here from uh, July 13th. That volume, 4.4 million shares. So far today, you are at 4.2. So in the case of XBI, let's take a look at that. A to B equals CD to the upside. There's your A to B. Let's just simply move that over to that C point. That gives you an XBI, a move to about 88.03. 90.09 happens to be its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Bullish on the weekly, bullish on the uh, monthly chart out there. I'll put up LABU just so those charts are on the uh, screen out there. But it looks like it did not keep my A to B. Oh, it did. It kept that A to B. Well, it kept the uh, C to D leg out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at LABU. Real quickly, if we go take a look at intraday, what's going on? Here's the NQ charts out there. On the NQ charts, what do we have? You've got a TD9 count top on the four-hour time frame. That's really what to watch out here. That high, and that's the high that uh, is at presently is at 15, 857.25. We're trading into that uh, swing point, likely will be tested. A close above 15, 857.25 suggests that we continue to head higher out there. 30-minute chart, you're in bar number nine as we come to this 12 o'clock session. So by 12.30, we should see a retracement begin, and that should take us back towards 15.741. Folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Please have a magnificent, marvelous Monday. Thanks for being here.